Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. Um, I'm filming this video before we have some, we have another addition to our family coming. So trying to get a few videos done before uh, things get crazy. So it's uh, exciting for us. Um, but yeah, uh, today I wanna walk through a painting, this painting right here. I had this requested by um, someone who saw a, a smaller version of this that I did on Instagram and said, I'd love to see a tutorial of that. So love it when I get uh, comments like that because it's so much easier to, um, to cater to people when they, when they ask for things. So if there's something that you're looking for and you'd love to see, I'd love to hear your comment. Um, and yeah, other than that, we're going to be walking you through the process of painting this barn here. All right, you guys. So I have my um, paper taped up uh, around the edges. You can just see the edge of it here and obviously on that side. Um, and I have my painting. This is one that I did a uh, little postcard painting. So this is kind of our inspiration, I suppose, besides the actual um, picture, the reference photo. I'm, I'm planning not to use this a whole lot. The, th the reason why is because um, in the past when I've tried to kind of replicate a painting that I've done and that I've liked and it's worked well, um, I always find the second painting, it tends to be way worse somehow. So I don't know why that is. It's maybe it's like a photocopy, you know, they get worse over time or something. Um, but I think, you know, there's something spontaneous about painting from the, the first time and all the, the kind of creative de decisions that you make, um, it's hard to replicate that. So um, I'm gonna have this here on the side as, as a bit of an inspiration reference, but I don't wanna be using it a whole lot, um, maybe a tad just to, to check in on some of the things. But overall, we're gonna be using the reference photo um, that I took and uh, yeah. So let's get started with the drawing phase. I'm going to start with the peak of the roof to kind of go like that. And that will go down there. This is the left side of the barn. What I really liked about the, the first one that I did um, was that it kind of didn't get caught up in some of the, the details. I, I kept things, I think because it's so small, you're able to keep things loose and, and I like that. So um, in that way, in that sense, I do want to replicate some of that. It's always hard, hard to replicate kind of the magic of something that feels spontaneous. Okay, there is the roof. Like that. Like that. The door. Just go like that to kind of show that that's going to get filled in. It doesn't really look centered, I'm not sure. Probably need to fix the roof, actually. All right, we'll give this a try. Otherwise, maybe the door is easier to move. A little more centered. Is that better? And maybe just need to widen it. It looks a little better. So then under here, this is one of those places where um, I just, I tried to view it all as one shape and all of this dark stuff just kind of uh, got to be one big thing. So again, I'm gonna try to do that. So these kind of railings, this fence, all of, most of that ended up being one shape. I'll have to look again at this fence, whether we made it stand out in the other painting, might do some negative painting here to make that pop and then everything else kind of dark. So that is that. Okay, and then the, just gonna outline a bit the shadow goes to there. Okay. 
rough indication. The trees in here were having some dark space. I wouldn't mind leaving. I like that there's like a little bit of blue sky you see through there, but I kind of want the trees to be pretty loose, so I'm just going to indicate where they go. And then tree here, again, indicate, may not hardly, <laughs> probably can hardly see that through the camera. Um, okay, and then this building, roof, oops. Okay, most of this is gonna be one shape. I kinda want it in the picture, it's not separated. I kinda wanna separate it in here so that it stands out a little bit. And in the picture, there's kind of a dark something here as well. We could probably add that in. I don't know if that's like a chicken coop or who knows what. And then this kinda sits out, a little bit of a roof. This is dark, dark shape, grass, and then bush. Okay, and in the original painting that I did, I did not really go, like all those blue buildings didn't really do anything with that. I just wanted a little bit of some horizon out there. And I kind of left it my eraser down here. Just going to, I feel like the angle of this, oh dear, is the wrong side of the eraser to use. That's okay. I think it'll kind of get covered up. Very messy. Just want the angle to come down a little bit more. Where's the good side? Here somewhere. Whatever. Okay, all the grass, <clears throat> I would basically just leave it. We're gonna kind of do some wet and wet and whatnot, try to get some nice colors popping in that area. Again, the tree, I'll maybe just indicate some stronger branches, whatever, they're kind of gonna be there. Um, don't really need to do a whole lot. This stuff, the line, there will be some lines that we'll put on, I think. Once we get the wash in, this is fine. Again, indicate, I think I'll just make this stand out a little more so that we know where it is after my horrible mess. And yeah, I think that's pretty much good for our drawing stage. All right, so we're gonna get into the first wash. Got my palette here. I'm um, just gonna hold it off to the side and spray it up with my little spray bottle uh, just to soften up the paints. <clears throat> and I don't know if, if you happen to have watched my brushes video, um, I would have shown you my number 18 Escoda Ultimo that where the top was broken. I've since had it fixed, so that is great because I love the brush. Um, what I'm doing is wetting the, just wetting the brush, no paint on it. And I'm gonna go in and wet the whole space that is sky. Everything that's sky. Now, the tree, theoretically, um, I would leave, but I remember just now that I was, I wanted to have some blue space in here. So I am wondering if I should maybe just kind of uh, go around like that, make sure that I do get some blue in there. Could probably even cover up the whole tree with blue and then just do the blue over top. But we will, we'll see how it goes. I actually, I like the idea almost of doing some wet and wet. So if we, if we kind of leave space for the tree here and here, leave some blue, um, we may be able to put, put that tree in wet and wet. For now, I want this space. Yeah, all of this. Um, I guess it's going to be green, so it probably doesn't need to be blue with the sky here, but 
we will do that. Okay, uh, just double checking that it's all wet. It looks like some of it's picking up. I, I think my room is a little warm in here, and so it seems like it's drying pretty fast. So I'm just gonna double it up, and make sure that it's all actually wet. If you are living in a fairly dry climate, um, or you run AC or something like that, which we are not because it's winter, um, it will, the water will dry up quite a bit faster. And so you kind of have to keep playing with that. One last touch up here. All right. So I'm going to be using ultramarine blue and, whoopsie, putting that here for now nice and strong and we will go right in there and get a little more try to kind of go from in the picture it does go from like very strong blue up there there's a lot of water on this brush so this is going to be a little bit of a wild ride because um, it's dripping I've got drips going here Okay, so I'm gonna I'm just dabbing the brush on some on a cloth. Don't really want well. This is uh, don't really want blue there, but you know this is interesting. It's adventuresome. So all I'm doing at this point, I can hold the cloth over. Just dabbing up some of that water, picking it up. I like that I got the blue there. I wanted it to be there, so that's great. I'm gonna go right across. We can bring out the fence later. I'm gonna try to pick up this run. Oh yeah, and I wanted this to be blue in here. There we go. Mission success. Now, if we want, we might do a little bit of green in here while it's wet so that we can just have some nice green to green edges. And so I'm just taking, uh, this is sap green. Just gonna use that for the kind of the base layer. And I can actually put some yellow. I'm trying to remember which yellow this is. Um, it's Hansa yellow medium or Azo yellow. And this brush holds a lot of water and I don't want it to bleed. So I'm trying to just um, put in a little bit here at a time and some here. Oh, I really like that. I like how that turned out. does make me wonder if all of this, you know, we, we just basically end up losing this blue down here and just go green instead. Probably makes more sense with where the tree is. Okay. I think um, this is still damp. And so I'm going to utilize that, um, the nice wet and wet feel. I'm switching to a smaller brush and I'm just going to go green and I'm going to go ultramarine off to the side here and paint, or uh, sorry, burnt sienna, ultramarine. This is kind of a darker color. Kind of, this is what I use for grays, mixing it down in this corner. And while this is still wet, I'll try putting some of it down here. I think that, that would have dried too much at this point, so I'm not even going to bother. It's a lost cause, but that will work. It's going to dry pretty light, but you know, we'll have a little bit of that color, which will be nice. Worked out pretty well. It's, I mean, playing with wet and wet is, is really fun. So, um, that's great that it's <clears throat> staying wet enough 
to be able to do some of this. We could even darken it up a little more because it just keeps wanting to dry light because it is wet and wet. Wet and wet always dries lighter. Okay, we'll just kind of let that dry and then we will get into dealing with the buildings. All right, you guys. So we're going to get into the actual barn at this point. Um, so I want to be using burnt sienna here and I want to keep the mix fairly, um, I don't know. <laughs> Trying to think of the word. I have a lot of colors. Vibrant, colorful, fresh. I guess fresh is probably what I was, what I'm thinking. So um, I'm gonna put in some burnt sienna. I'm gonna play around with some different colors. I'm putting in a little bit of this um, scarlet, a little more burnt sienna again. I want a bunch of kind of just different, interesting colors going on. I'm gonna leave well no i think i'll do the door go right up to the peak a little more of red again we want it vibrant i think i'll put in a little bit of yellow ochre Okay, a little more burnt sienna. It's, you can tell it's like kind of drying up at the top. And now, not sure what to do. I think I want to work really fast and do all of this kind of while, we're, while it's still wet. So I actually want this to be more in the shadows. So I'm just start putting blue into this mix for now ultramarine blue into those colors I already had. I think we'll add in the darkest parts later, but we'll just kind of do this for now. And I might just go back in here, add in a little bit of that. It did not preserve any <laughs> fence posts there, which is fine, I think. And let's see in the picture, we're not gonna worry about this at this point. So now I'm gonna do, jump right into the green. So for that, I'm just gonna start spraying up the area. And this is gonna be messy and wonderful all at once. So that is yellow, that's green. Uh, some more green. I'm just going to bleed that in here. I kind of like some of these little spots that are sticking out because they just look a little, you know, we have a little bit of that grass going on. But in general, I want this to feel really nice and colorful. So just trying to bring in lots of interesting wet and wet. Blend in with that. A little more green. This is just sap green. And I can probably darken it up a little bit, but I don't want to do this. Just put in a little bit of um, ultramarine blue. Darken some of this up. And I can do that again. I'm gonna go do some of that in this bottom corner. We'll add a little more 
of a layer once we're done with some blades of grass. And I'll do a little more up here, I think. And I think I'll put in another splash. Oh, that didn't really work. Of yellow. Something like that. And let that kind of bleed together. Some of it, as you can see, is drying here. I don't want to do too much there because it'll kind of bleed into itself. So I think we just leave that now. Okay, I think this is dry at this point, or at least enough of it to get started. Um, so I'm going to be working on the barn itself. I'm using ultramarine and burnt sienna. We're going to start putting in some of those shadowed areas. So I'm mixing up. This is a, like a fairly watery mix. So I want it to be l not crazy light, but light enough and catching myself from looking at the painting too much. So I'm looking maybe a little more blue and um, cause I want this to just look a little more shadowy and looking at the picture itself to kind of judge where those lines are. A little more blue, just mixing up a little more. And here, when we get over the area that's already kind of blue-gray, it will definitely feel quite a bit more blue-gray. There, and we'll just go straight down. And I've almost, <laughs> almost covered it up already, but I'm just gonna try to preserve like something like that, like a, a bit of a fence post feeling, because there's that little fence post in there. Just try to make it stand out a bit. And we'll just cover this whole area like that. Then I think while this is wet, I'm gonna try this. I'm doing the same mix, I'm just going a fair bit darker. And I'm going to bring down bring down some of these posts. And I'll put that wet and wet back in here too. And like here. You can do this without it bleeding in. Just go up there. And then I think I'll just while I'm here, there is this other shape in the back, like back here, another kind of building. So I'm trying to do this a little lighter, this one in the back, just so that it doesn't stick out quite so much. Fades into the background a bit. Something like that. We can do this one too. I'm going to put in a little bit of, this is raw umber or burnt umber, just to bring some brown in here. And a little more back into that original dark mix. Something like that. Not a huge fan of how like straight that bottom looks. So I'm just gonna dip my brush, kind of rinse it out, dip it on a cloth, 
and I'm just going to run that wet cloth on the bottom there. Yeah. Okay, so, um, well, I was going to say you can let it dry, but I can do the door at this point because that's not really affected by anything else. So I'll do that with the opening. I want it to be kind of blue, like a, a dark um, blue shadow. A little more blue coming through because it's so warm. The color underneath it is so warm. Um, it does kind of come through. Do -do. I'm going to try to keep a little bit of this grass feeling at the bottom. Might be hard to do. So I'll try to keep it a little jaggedy here and there. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. Something like that. So I need to let this dry before I can do the roof. We're getting close to, you know, moving into some some different things. We can probably move on to the green at this point. Um, which I think is going to be a little bit interesting. So with the greens, I'm going to be playing with a bunch of different colors. I'm going to be using this brush and then partway through, I'm going to use um, kind of a beat up brush that I have and trying to get a little bit of texture up in these areas here. So if you don't have a brush like that, that's probably fine. I don't do that a lot. So this will be kind of a, I don't know, it feels like every time is the first time when I do that kind of stuff. So I'm putting in some yellows. I just want to get a little bit where the shape is. Some greens. Okay. Kind of in that area. I don't want to destroy this brush. So I'm trying not to move it around too much, too crazy. This is some blue mixed into the same mix. And I did want to preserve kind of this space. So we'll kind of go like that, just to remind us where that space is. And now I think at this point we just need to get really messy. So I'll bring that out to the edge. It's time probably to get the beat up brush. We're going to bring in some darks here. Probably shouldn't go too close to this roof because it's still fresh. Um, so beat up brush, greens, yellow. I'm just kind of going to go like that and we're going to try to bring out a bit of texture like so don't want to overdo it and at this point I need to work quickly because everything is drying so we got to bring this right up to the roof because I do want that to look nice and then we got to get in with some darks right away before this all starts to dry that's going to be, that does not look good. It's too much red. Might actually start using some Payne's, uh, Payne's Gray. Because I do have that on the palette. Looking now, I'm, I have to, I keep looking at the painting itself. And I need to switch and look at the, at the picture. And remind myself where these darks go. Doesn't need to be perfect, but I do kind of want to get the feeling some where some of those things are. So some darker areas here, some darker areas here. There's even some up there. And in here. Right up against the building. I'm gonna do some pretty, this is pretty dark, mixed pretty thickly, and for the, do that for the trunk, and in here, it's blue, I don't know, it doesn't actually really seem to be reading as well as I thought, I thought by leaving it, it would read well, so I do think, kind of have to do a little bit of some stuff there, and then maybe with a darker green even, Oh, that didn't work. I'm trying to maybe create some low hanging. Sorry, I bumped something. 
something like that. It's a little bit less space. There's a window there now, but you know, where you can see through, but it doesn't stick out a whole lot. So I think basically we probably have to leave this at this point. Uh, I'll just add in a little more darks down below, but kind of have to let this dry. And then I'll put in, I'll bring out the trunks a little bit and also the fence, probably like I did the first time, um, make the fence darker than everything else, which will be a little hard seeing as I went so dark with this. We'll try that. As that dries, I think I can now get back to the roofs here. So this roof is a little more like rusty. So I'm gonna just use the same color here, burnt sienna. Um, a little bit of yellow ochre. Okay, the other roof here, not so much. So. What I'm gonna do is actually, this space is pretty much already has these same colors. Little bit of burnt sienna and then some ultramarine blue. And I want it to be a little on the blue side, kind of a bluey gray. I'm just realizing that our roof is actually really different than the original roof. The original roof comes out a fair bit. That's okay. Yeah, I lost some, some length, like the original roof comes out here. I probably could bring some of that back in by extending this dark area, the shadowed area on the roof. Might try that like here. So it kind of comes out. Want it to fit. So it comes out a little further here and then This is the fence kind of behind. Like that. Cool. Uh, yeah, I think that looks all right. So at this point, I think we need to let kind of everything dry. We can actually probably put some lines there. I was thinking, start putting some of the details on the roof here, but that's too wet. So for the lines, I'm gonna be using, this is a Perla number 12, a Skoda Perla. And I'm using the same color that I was just using, this kind of dark mixture of ultramarine and burnt sienna. That's like the majority of the painting, I guess. Okay, and we're just gonna bring out some lines where um, you can tell in the picture some of these like cracks and stuff. There, there, and there's kind of like one that sticks down a little more. Uh, here, kind of one going here. Don't want to overdo it. Um, I think what I did with the other painting so I took a dry brush and added some little more, there, overdid it. Add a little more texture, which I probably will do that. I can probably do that right now because most of this is not too awful wet. So for that, I'm just gonna go some, um, I guess it, the brush needs to be fairly dry. Raw umber and burnt sienna. Okay, and I'm just, I don't know how to explain this mix. Like it's a little, it's not, it's not super dry. I'm dabbing the brush on, on the rag. I just want some of it. Just want some different texture, color. Very aware that I might be ruining everything. That's okay. Not 
sure I love that, but we'll kind of use some of it, pick up some of these edges. Okay, yeah, no, I'm pretty happy with that. Kind of made the, the lines blend in a little more too. So um, can I let everything rest? We still need to add some, some spray here. Um, and I could probably add, let's add a little more of the darks to this shed on the, on the right. Because it's quite light right now. Want to preserve some of it. It kind of has this angle thing going on with this shadow. And the roof comes out. Actually, it comes out a fair bit. Okay. And we can probably do the little bit of texturing on the roof. I think actually what I did with the other painting was just add like a streak of brown like that. Just using my finger to smudge some of it. It's probably good. And then for oops, for the main roof, similar thing, but we're just going to go this is the kind of light gray mixture. And I don't well, no. I'm not going to do anything kind of angled going this way. Um I'll add a little bit of shadow here, just to the edge, parts that are most in the shade. And I think at this point, the rest is dry enough, we can add in some dark kind of tree shape in here. maybe too dark. So I'll just lighten up some of it. Okay, and then the fence. I'm just going to take a little bit of this shadow and kind of bring it along the bottom to create that shadow from the trees feel. Maybe a bit there. Shadow under that awning. Okay. Now in, I might deal with this when we're doing all the splatter, but in the picture there's a few darker green areas here. So I might come back in with that. I think the trees area kind of maybe okay, close to okay. Again, this is an area where I don't really want to overdo it and do too much. Just need to bring out a little bit of feeling of trees there. Okay, pretty happy with that. So let's move on to the grass. It's been a while that we've been on the grass. So the grass is definitely going to be dry at this point. I'm just going to move some brushes around to give myself a little bit of space. So for the grass, we're going to do a mixture of some splattering and some brushwork. Um, so I'll start with the splattering. For that, I'm just getting a pretty watery mix. Um, I just as I was splattering, was realizing it would be nice for the splatters kind of have a direction. They have a bit of a feel. And I was going sideways. And I was thinking I should probably try to splatter up so that it feels, because it does have a little bit of motion, feeling of height, so just so that it kind of would match where you'd have like grass, a feeling of grass down there. 
Okay. Go some darks. All right, so now I, this is kind of one dimensional. So we've got to figure out how to bring out some different kind of things going on. So this is very juicy splatter. And I may even just take my spray bottle. Kind of go like that. Yeah in a couple spots. I just want some difference between like here and there. I want to start concentrating a bit uh, of things here. So I don't know if that makes sense. Visual separation between that area and the other. So I'm going to do this is a darker blue green area. I'll just splatter it into the already wet mix. So then we got some darker darks going on there. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, we'll bring in some blades of grass here soon. Once this has had a chance to dry, if I do it now, it'll be overworked. Ah, nice and messy. So yeah, I'll let that kind of dry. We got some splatters up in the sky. That's fine. Um, so we'll let it dry. Bring in some blades, and I think I'm almost. We're almost at the point where we would be done. I, I like you know, the fresh feeling of it, and I don't want to overdo it. Um, and I think sometimes bringing in too much detail, too many lines and whatnot, you, you start to lose that. So I'm gonna to try to leave it as much like this as I can. All right, we are getting really close to the end. Uh, I cleaned off my water, rinsed up my water pot. So I'm just dealing with some clean water now. And if you want to go ahead and do that, if you're following along, you could, you don't have to, I just, uh, thought I should. So I'm mixing up, sorry, I'll hold this where you can see it, mixing up some dark green and I want to kind of, I want to kind of have a bit of angle going like this leading in towards the painting, the bulk of the painting. So we'll just add in a few of these. It's feeling like too thin. Oh dear. It's not going well. There you go. It's a little more like what I want. So I go right over top of the other one. Uh, we'll add in a little bit of this is yellow ochre. Looking at this main picture. Trying to just see, kind of add a bit of variety. At least they're fairly faint. You don't want everything going the same way, but um, yeah, a little bit here. Okay, I'm just gonna spray this bottom spot. Whoops. Just want those to fade away a little bit. And actually, I think what I might do is, sorry, I had to put that in my mouth, just spray up the, the very bottom. So then when we're doing our, our blades, the, I think we'll do a few more, they have somewhere to kind of bleed into, the water below it is wet. Do some more here. Change the direction a little bit here and there. I think I want to spray underneath there as well. Like that. Do a couple in here going the other direction. More straight. Now, I think the last thing, this to me, this looks good. I think the grass is good. I just feel like. A, this could use a little bit of darkness, a little bit of change in colors from here to here, maybe even the whole bottom. So I think what I'm going to do is just spray up some of these spots again, and I'm going to mix up before it dries, mix up um, 
a darker version of the same thing. Green, blue, uh, burnt sienna, which has kind of actually gotten quite dry at this point in my, on my palette. Okay, I'm just gonna put that in some spots here. For now, I'll just put it on. Yeah, like that, and then I'll spray it up again. Let it bleed like that. Maybe a little bit more here. Got some there. Maybe even kind of this, do this corner a little bit. Yeah, I think that looks nice. Just trying to decide if I want to just bring it all the way across, like a little bit maybe, the whole way across. Don't want it to just look too, too much like a line, but yeah, I like that. Okay, so that is that. Um, I was noticing there's a couple things that I wanted to touch up here before we move on to the birds, and then that's pretty much done. Um, I'm just mixing up a slight shallow shadow color and I'm going to be doing like over by the shed here just adding a little bit of life to the shadow down here oops too watery so just dabbing that on a rag I'm trying to bring out see these like um, just trying to make this a bit jaggedy so that we can feel a little bit of some blades of grass. Don't want to overdo it. I'm just wetting my brush. So this is a clean brush and then we'll pick up some of that. Yeah, so I wanted a little bit of that. I honestly could probably do the same in here, down at the bottom of some of this shaded area. Yeah, I like that. Again, don't want to overdo it. Pretty happy with that. Oh, we had said that we were going to put maybe some dark in there, which I never did. I'm just kind of go like that. And then this may be a bit of a disaster. No, it was not. That's perfect. Pretty much what I wanted. So at this point, I'm just going to take the same blue-gray and we'll add in some birds. I like in my, they're not obviously in the picture, but in my painting I like them being right in this corner coming out from over these trees. I'll try to maybe use some of these little paint splatters to be birds. One more. Yeah, pretty happy with that. The only thing maybe that I am not a fan of is there's some space here. You can see, I don't know if you can, yeah, you can see a little bit where I drew where the bushes were gonna be. I don't want to put bushes there because I like this, how it is. But this grass just being the only thing there, I'm not crazy about that. So I do think I'll fix that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going back to my, to a, just a normal brush. And I'm just going to go, I think I actually did this in the same, uh, with the other painting as well, just for the same reason. So I'm just mixing up a little bit of sap green and um, ultramarine blue. I'm just going to go kind of like this, just to add like a layer and clean out my brush. Pick that up just so it's something besides that one color. And actually, maybe we can go in and bring that up to some of those lines so those lines don't show or they don't seem weird. And I'll just again dry my brush to take away that edge. Yeah, happy with that. Looks nice. 
just feels like something there. Might just do a little bit more. This is slightly darker mix. Go in wet and wet. Perfect. Thanks you guys. After um, finishing filming, I did go in and do a couple little spots in here with a little bit of darker pigment and a couple more blades of grass kind of in that same dark color. So just so you're aware that the camera was off for that. Um, but yeah, that, that is something that I did. So sorry about that. Uh, well, I think it made it better overall. Um, other than that, uh, thank you so much for those of you guys who comment uh, and you know make, uh, give suggestions and things for future videos. It's really helpful for me. And I uh, hope to see you in the next one.